My ick is when you come in for your induction, talking about, can I take a shower and eat? What? My ick is when you ask me how much the baby weighs, and it's still, and it's still in your hands. <laughs> Dad comes outside and asks for a paternity test right outside the room door. Saying you don't want any pain medicine, no epidural, but you are at an 8 out of 10 pain with just a Cervidil and you're still closed, fingertip. Well, we've already told you to push a call light, but every five minutes, your Excuse family me. member coming Excuse at me. the front Excuse desk. Me, ask him why. Ask him for something else. Excuse me, have a blanket? <laughs> Another egg. When you're going room to room between one baby mama and your other baby mama. Oh, no. Egg. <laughs> See that? It's the unlimited trips to the nurse's station for me. So we didn't learn. We didn't learn from last time. We did it. So, we didn't learn. Comprehension, comprehension, compre. We didn't learn. Girls can't take my motherfucking mouth, bitch. My mouth is real and it's raw and it's watchy, bitch. I'm gonna give the girls exactly what the fuck they asked for. The girls is going to know my rap. Trust me. Hey y'all, welcome back to another episode of The World Is Ghetto. Nah, for real, that should be the new intro because it's crazy. It's crazy. This video is I'll be pushing out. It's crazy, but for real, for real, first things first, I want to say thank you so much to everyone who has been supporting my channel. Y'all have been watching them. Y'all have been sharing them. Y'all have been subscribing, but some of y'all have not been subscribing. So make sure you hit that subscribe button because guess what, y'all? It's no longer the road to 1,000 subs now. It's the road to 2,000 subscribers. We can do it, y'all. Like, I cannot believe my eyes when I was, I was, I've just been seeing like the subscribers going up and I know by the time I'm dropping this video we'll already hit our goal of a thousand because we're in 900s and something so I am putting it out there I know y'all can do it with me y'all make sure you hit the subscribe because y'all YouTube is not for the week for real for real like it takes time for us to make this videos put them together but y'all subscribing and and liking sharing commenting like giving your thoughts down in the comment section that that really encourages asked to like be like you know more on top of the game like and and bring more videos for y'all for y'all entertainment a lot of y'all give me feedback on the last video i really appreciate y'all like yeah it's going up this is crazy so y'all don't wait until i blow up for y'all to join the the way y'all make sure y'all join right now or y'all see me without this a lot of subscribers but we getting there we growing so y'all don't wait until i blow up y'all just come so that in the future once we get there together y'all gonna be like i was here before before if she even hit 2k like i was among the people who was helping her like come up for real for real because you know what it helps also with the youtube uh, logarithm y'all make sure y'all do that for me because this is crazy i really appreciate y'all i want to i want to give y'all hugs but i i really can't but i'm giving y'all like virtual hugs but yeah i don't want to talk too much because yeah this video is about to be crazy so i want to give y'all a little brief y'all um this video is gonna be a lot it's gonna be a lot um a lot of videos are gonna be concerning the workplace co-workers people firing um i mean people getting fired people quitting their jobs so it's something relatable and i know a lot of us work in the daily world we experience this so this is a very relatable video so it's gonna bring out a whole bunch of topics so don't be scared to leave your thoughts in the comment section but just be respectful but you can you can give out your opinions um because at the end of the day it's a free world for y'all too to um give your opinions and then another disclaimer is this is this video is not to bash anyone it's just to bring awareness at the same time it's to just give y'all something to watch to entertain y'all something that y'all can you know sit back relax and watch on a sunday afternoon or you know what i'm saying so yeah without further ado y'all let's get right into this crazy ass video sorry honey but this is the only way i need a different i'm nurse. the only nurse that you're gonna get no. right now okay you're gonna give me your hand because you're discharged Okay, let's go. Can you have Tiffany come back in here? No, Tiffany's not a nurse, so give me your arm because we're leaving. I'm gonna count to three and then I'm getting security. One, two, three. Uh, what's the problem? I, I just don't understand. feel that you're not doing a good job in my I don't, apartment. I don't understand when I, you have my undivided attention every time when I'm here. I'm well, I'm glad that you think that it's undivided attention, mm -hmm. but to me, it's not. 
Okay. All right. So well, I will call the agency that's and fine. ask them to replace you as soon as possible. And that's you fine. Can, we can um, call them right now. That is fine with me. We can call them right now. We have no problem with that. I don't either. You can uh, take your ass and leave. Okay, so so you telling me that if I leave right now, you can do all of this stuff by yourself? I will do it, yes. Okay, well, when it's time for you to go to the bathroom, you can go ahead and piss all over your floor. I will piss all over the floor. floor. Where, where's your kids at? I have two grown sons and they will help But they're not here. But they're not here, though. They're not here. True. They're not here. That's why you have 24-hour care, because your kids are not here to help you. That's true. I literally take care of you how I would take care of my grandma. So I just want to let you know that, but it's fine. Okay. I'm about to call and have somebody relieve me. So you have a nice day. You too. Have Thank the day. You. Have the day that you deserve. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I'm going to stay out here real quick and call. I'm going to do the right thing. I'm not going to leave. I'm going to just call and have somebody replace me right now. You're telling me that the nurses of TikTok truly convinced themselves that the best course of action to prove that they're not heartless demons was to get a woman fired from her job before the holidays and New Year? Y'all think that y'all are beating the bully allegations by calling up to a woman's job nonstop, making up blatant lies to get her fired during a time where people are one paycheck away from living on the fucking street? I don't think it's given what y'all think it gives. But since y'all are so caught up on this idea of like, well, if you're not a nurse, you don't get to speak on the nursing field. You don't get to speak on the profession of being a nurse if you're not a nurse. I'm gonna come up here and give you guys the opinion that my mother had, somebody who dedicated like 20 plus years of her life to being a nurse, someone who worked in every hospital in our area, someone who traveled the country being a nurse, somebody who was the director of nursing, ran hospitals, was a teacher at a university teaching nursing students. I'm gonna give you her opinion. And this is her. This is my mom. You see, my mom unfortunately won't be able to get up here and share her opinions herself because my mom was one of the nurses who chose to continue to work through the pandemic. A nurse who chose to work through the pandemic knowing that she had a pre-existing condition that made her extremely high risk. But I spent my entire life listening to my mom talk to me about the nurses that she worked with in these hospitals. And since y'all want the opinion of a nurse, I'ma give you one. My mother hated you bitches. Hated the ground y'all walked on, the air y'all breathed. Because my mother would come home from a shift at work and cry to me about how she would have to go behind other nurses to patients that weren't even hers and clean them up because nurses were allowing patients to sit in their own piss and shit all day. My mom would come home crying, telling me stories about the tears that would be shed by patients due to the pain they experienced from the bed sores that they had from not being cleaned properly, not being turned properly. My mom would come and tell me about how when she was getting ready to clock out, she would make her final rounds to her patients and tell them bye and let them know that they were gonna be getting a different nurse. She would have patients cry to her about the fact that she wouldn't be coming back to care for them because they knew for those four or five days that my mom was off work, they were left in the hands of the other nurses who they said didn't even treat them like human beings. And this was regular occurrences. These were not one-off situations. Oh, one story here. My mom would come home almost every shift telling me these reoccurring situations. And it always involved other nurses. I remember when my grandmother was dying from cancer. She was extremely lucky to have someone like my mother there to advocate for her. Because when my grandmother had bowel issues due to her cancer and her chemotherapy, she ended up with a colostomy bag. And there was a nurse that walked out of my grandmother's room and made a huge scene about how it smelled like a barn, spraying air freshener, plugging hers. Oh my God, it's, oh, what is, who is that? Who is that? Regarding an elderly woman dying from cancer on the oncology floor, the floor dedicated to cancer patients. My mother was actually almost put out of that hospital for defending her mother against an ignorant, unprofessional nurse who acted like this was the first colostomy bag to make it on the oncology floor. And the thing I really wanna leave y'all with is when my mom got COVID, 
She was feeling sick, so she went to the doctor, got a COVID test, came back positive. She had pre-existing respiratory issues, so they sent her home with oxygen tanks because her oxygen levels were already extremely low. I don't know how many days she was still home, but she was quarantined in this, this very room that I'm sitting in right now. I live in her room now. And she had to quarantine in this room by herself. And I was out in the kitchen, and I would cook dinner and leave it by the door, leave medicine, drinks, everything I could by the door. And I'm sure some of you can relate because I'm not the only person who's lost a loved one to COVID in this way, but if you haven't experienced it, I can't tell you the how traumatizing it was to feel like I couldn't even fall asleep because I was scared that my mom would lay here in this bed and just die. But one day, one morning she texted me and she was like, you've got to call 911, I can't breathe. The ambulance showed up, they put her on the stretcher, and I didn't even get to hug or kiss her goodbye because she was contagious. They wheeled her out the front door, and I never got to see my mom in person again. And while my mom, a nurse who dedicated her life to taking care of others, a nurse who dedicated her life to working at the very hospital that she was admitted to, she laid in that hospital bed on 100% oxygen and you nurses treated her like fucking shit. A fellow nurse, y'all treated a fellow nurse like fucking trash. Like, like, le like, she, like she was an annoyance, like she was an inconvenience to y'all's day and y'all's time. A woman who only found herself dying in that hospital bed because she dedicated her life to taking care of other people who found themselves in hospital beds dying from COVID. And you would think that after dedicating all these years of your life to caring for other people that good karma would come around, but y'all showed no grace. I remember sitting on FaceTime with my mom. She couldn't even talk back to me for real because she could not breathe. And y'all would come in the room yelling at her and screaming and sucking y'all's teeth and rolling y'all's eyes. I remember my mom FaceTiming me and my granddad, her father, and my grandfather in his 70s is having to call up to the hospital and try to advocate for his daughter because they're treating her like trash. My mom's laying in bed and can't breathe. And she's FaceTiming us trying to tell us in between gasps how these nurses are treating her. And you know, my mom's worst fear was dying alone. And my mom died by herself, unable to be visited by family, surrounded by nurses who couldn't give a fuck less about her. And you know, she died during quarantine, so obviously it's been a few years. But I still to this day hold out hope. Just a little bit of hope that there was one nurse, that hopefully there was one nurse that had just even an ounce of the level of compassion that my mom had for every patient she ever came into contact with. Yes, even the ones who cursed her out, even the dementia patients who said fucked up shit to her. She didn't use people's illnesses or people's bad attitudes because they're dying as an excuse to treat them like trash. And I hold out, I hold out hope that there was one nurse there that maybe had enough compassion to hold her hand the way I would have had I been able to be there. My mom wasn't perfect. And we didn't have the perfect relationship, but she was a damn good nurse. And if she didn't care about nothing or no one else, she cared about her patients. And it was jarring to see the things that she had told me my entire life about fellow nurses that she had worked with play out in real life. So y'all are right. Y'all aren't bullies. Y'all are something far fucking worse. Hi, you, you thought my son was my daughter? No. His sister? Yes, you did. No. You don't ask no questions we, like that. It's very inappropriate. No. You told her it's her brother's her. 
That's highly disrespectful. That's, right. That's very disrespectful to accuse my son of <laughs> What I said. You did. I did. You did. You need there? to ask questions differently and appropriately. Just because his skin no. is darker than hers, I was on the phone. It anything. does have to do with it. It does have you to do to with it. it. No, I'm not bringing. Escort me and arrest me, because I don't give a fuck. You don't talk like that to no little girl. Just because their color is different does not mean he's sister. That's fucked up. She needs to go. And yeah, I can go. Can go. I don't have no problem with that, but that's fucked up. Get Azuria, let's go. That is pretty fucked up. The answers that to the so questions good. that you are about to ask, am so I not? Good. Are those not the answers to the questions that you were asked? First of all, you didn't even let me finish my statement. Second please of all, you didn't even let me please. finish saying please what I had to say. You keep saying, please, please say what I got to say, statement. but every time I talk, you're cutting me off and it's getting well, very rude. And I feel like as a patient, that's not, sure, that's not right, fair right. to me. And you, okay. For you to be a charge nurse to, and just come in, bone rush and just right. tell me what I can and cannot do, sure. I don't like that. That's, that's not, that's, I don't feel like that's not fair. That's your I agree. Are you still talking? Yes, I'm trying to get you to say whatever it is you need to say so that we can move on. That's what I'm trying to do. So I'm listening. I understand you feel like you were not treated correctly. I understand you feel like your pain was not treated correctly. Are those valid concerns? Well, I, I haven't looked at your chart. I don't know what your normal is. I don't know what your baseline is. So I don't really have an opinion one way or the other. All I do know is that I've got people in the waiting room that need a room. I have a patient who has been worked up and discharged that is occupying a room. I have contacted patient advocate as per your request. It will be a while before they can get down here. It's the best that I can do. However, the fact remains the same. I have people in the lobby that need rooms. And I'm sorry that my presentation and demeanor are unsatisfactory to you. Sincere apologies. Um, and I'm glad to listen to whatever it is you have to say. Please continue. Okay, nothing to say, good enough. All right, I'm gonna have Kayla come in here and pull your line. If you decide not to walk out of the room, we'll listen, I will have security escorted you. Have a good day. I'm sorry, what was your name again? Oh, no, you don't. I'm not being hostile. I'm just trying to explain to you, but I'm also- Will you help me, please? But you need to also God. help us help you too. She's, I mean, there's nothing else she can do. I don't understand what I should what be doing. That? There's nothing else she can do. She's, there is. What? Tell I me what I'm trying to, to focus on your breathing. I'm trying. She and I'm is breathing. <laughs> She's had a 10 out of 10 pain. Okay. I don't. Well, I just know that she's gotten even more hysterical since she's been here. Are you saying I can't have my advocate? If it causes you to behave this way, it may it may limit your advocate. Yeah. What? How am I behaving? How is my behavior? Um, I think she's ready. I just medicated her, so it can start working while you're going over there. Good. 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 What, what's going on? You good? Let me see her. Yeah. All right. So she's going in to get in a CAT scan. I couldn't find anything last time. Well, I think the last time she was here, they did an abdomen and pelvis. This time they want a chest and a head on her. We're going to scan her head with no contrast. And then we're going to scan her chest to make sure she doesn't have a blood clot going on in her chest. It's going to make her My neck is also really hard to turn since they dropped me. Okay, you can't order nothing for your neck. Maybe they got other plans for you. I don't know. I'll, I'll go look into that for you. So though. what made you call Ramsa? This pain. What pain? The the pain in, in her in her side. We thought it was a kidney. Genuinely quit a job because of bullies trying to corner me in the bathroom. And the story is crazy. There are two kinds of nurse bullies. And the second one 
is dangerous and you should probably quit your job when you're dealing with this person. The first one may not like you because of stupid stuff. Like they might not like you because you come in bouncing and you're happy at work every day and their spouse is making them miserable. There's nothing that you can do about those people. There's going to be miserable people at every kind of job. So uh, whatever. Deal with those people by ignoring them. But the second kind of bully, they're dangerous. They will do anything in their power, including hurting a patient or hurting someone else, including you physically to get you out. And y'all know I do not get on this app and tell y'all to quit jobs, but I'm telling you that if you are dealing with bully number two, you need to quit your job because they're either going to try to get you hurt or get your license taken. They are dangerous. Stay away from me, you parasite. All you want to do is come over here and drain energy. Every time I talk to you, I leave the energy, the conversation drained, looking like Dracula. Looking like I just got a thousand years of blood sucked out of my neck. You see how long my neck is? Do you know how much blood is flowing down my neck? See, one thing about those nurses that try to be bullies during report and make other nurses feel small or dumb or try to make people stay later and all this foolishness, one thing about it with me, if you're going to try that with me, when I come back and I take report from you, all your T's better be crossed, all your I's better be dotted. Because one thing I've realized with these nurses who try to act like that during report, the reason why they're going so hard on you and want to know so much is because they're literally relying on your report for their entire shift. Do you think that they're going through that patient's charts, looking at their HMP, looking at the orders, looking at, they ain't looking at none of that. They're waiting on you to get to give them all that information. That's what they want. Because a nurse who is going to do their own assessment, their own research on their patient, they ain't going that hard. It's these lazy ones who want to rely on you for everything who's going to try to make you feel like that. But listen, baby, one thing about me, you can't bully me during rapport. You can't. You're going to take what you get and you can't get upset. And then when I come back and I take an assignment from you, you better know everything you're supposed to know. Because I'm going to eat your mama Jill. So this crazy bitch nurse from the evening shift was yelling at me, talking about, you missed this chart. How dare you do that? Because this should have been done hours ago. Now I have to rush and do this and that. I mean, going clean off on me. Everybody was looking at her. The whole nurse's station was full. Even the charge nurse who checked my work was sitting right next to me and she's looking like what the fuck is she talking about one of the doctors had left a patient's chart with orders in it in the patient room so it wasn't in slot and it was never handed to me don't blame the doctor blame the unit coordinator i was like come on bitch so i was a hothead back then instantly went off on her back honey we were yelling we were tearing that motherfucker down and the charge nurse was sitting right next to me she didn't say anything to either one of them so now i understand and see why other nurses say be careful what you say around other nurses let's talk about it so i'm technically only what two months into my position and for the next four weeks i am precepting on a med search floor so my first week with my preceptor you know she was cool and whatnot i'm not really a talkative person like i'm very to myself like i'm nice but i also know my boundaries so the preceptor that i'm with i had mentioned so she's like so you're gonna be in the ed and i was like yeah but they have me like shadowing like on med church floors for the next four weeks and she's like oh that's weird and i'm just like yeah but it's okay like you know i'm not really sure like you know like why you know they like want me here like maybe it's just for like you know getting like some experience seeing like you know how patients go from the er to the med search floor and like the care that they have to offer there maybe that's the reason why but you know like i'm not gonna be upset about it or anything like that i'm just gonna take the experience and take this as like a learning lesson for me before i go to the ed so this week i'm with a different preceptor so every floor that i'm with like i'm with someone different so today i'm like you know with my preceptor and my educator calls me she's like hey like do you mind coming to meet with me and your er manager and i was just like okay yeah sure no problem i'll be down in a minute now for me i thought this was so weird because i'm just like why is she choosing to meet with me just because i was like you know what i wasn't really expecting to meet with her until like my four weeks was over of shadowing on like the med search floors 
and then it's time for me to go to the ed type of thing but i was like all right cool no problem i'm gonna just go down there and see like what was up so i get into the office and they're like so like how's everything been going like how was your first week and i was like i was honest i was like well my first week i felt like i really didn't do too much i kind of felt like i was like a nursing student all over again like just observing watching like what my preceptor was kind of doing like i wasn't really like interactive with patients that much or really even doing anything but i was like this week is a little different so the preceptor that i'm with today like he like coming in he was like okay let's have a goal for today's shift i'm going to like let you do the meds pull from the pixis um start lines like do all of that so i was like oh, okay like i felt good about this week because i felt like my first week it was kind of just like oh my gosh like i'm gonna be bored out my mind if i literally have to do this for four weeks but then coming into this week and being with this preceptor i was like okay like you know what you're doing like you're obviously a preceptor that i want to follow and that i want to shadow for the remainder of this week because i felt like i'm actually learning the basics i'm being hands-on and i like to be hands-on like that's the way that i learn best so then my educator hits me with um okay like that's nice so your preceptor from the previous week said that you said something kind of like in the context of like oh you don't know why you're here or you don't know what you're doing here and when she said that i looked at her like what like okay like i didn't look too crazy but i was like a little like blown back now the only reason why i was a little like blown back by this was because i didn't really say it in that type of context i was kind of just saying like you know like i really don't like know what the expectation is but i'm definitely gonna you know try to learn the most of it but i felt like what i said to this other nurse was taken out of context and she went back and told my educator this and i felt like it put like a bad like taste or like a sour like maybe like aspect about like me going to these other floors and like what i may be saying out like on these floors like it's not anything bad but i also feel like you took what i said to you like out of context and you went back and told them this so now it looks bad on like me as a person and i feel like i've seen videos of other nurses talking about be careful like what you say around other nurses just because you know other nurses might feel some type of way that you know maybe you're in a department that they want to be in or you know you're making more money because either like you're a traveler or something like that and I kind of did feel like you know I'm like a new nurse I didn't think like this would automatically happen like straight off the bat like I'm literally only two months into working my job like I would figure like okay maybe this is something I might deal with like later on down the road type of thing but two months into my job like this is how your nurses are coming like what the heck but one thing i will say like i'm glad that this did happen to me like very like early on into my career just because i felt like this was like all right this is a learning lesson and i see that obviously this is very much happening out here in the nursing world so i'm gonna tread cautiously like moving forward so i would say i cannot express this more than enough all my new nurses if you are a new grad nurse when these og nurses are telling you be careful what you say to other nurses when you're on the floor be careful what you say because a lot of the things that you may say can be taken out of context get back to the wrong people and now higher ups may have a different perspective of you than what you presented like yourself like in the interview and that's that's not the type of energy that you're trying to give especially as like a new as a newbie like on the floor type of thing like all the new nurses the baby nurses even seasoned nurses so and i'm speaking from experience so if a nurse is messing with you like fucking with you picking with you for no reason report them and i'm gonna tell you why because me the old me i have lost so many contracts when i was travel nursing especially when they was paying us ten thousand dollars a week y'all at the end like right before we was finna go home and get a bonus y'all i literally cussed the charge nurse out <clears throat> because one of my patients was crashing and she was like oh girl please you only got two patients i said bitch i don't care if i have one if i'm telling you to go pull a med i need you to help me I don't have nobody else here to help me because my the person I was working with had went on lunch or whatever. 
y'all cuss her out, walked her like a dog, back and forth through that nurse's station. Everybody had stopped and turned around and was looking like, what, what the fuck going on? I got, I had to go to my hotel room for like five days while they investigated. Got sent home. And I could still work for the company, but at that time they was like, you're not allowed to work for us in Texas no more. So just reporting because take it from me, I have lost so many contracts because of this right here. Not being able to control my mouth. Control your mouth and, and start a paper trail. When you start a paper trail and you go about it the right, the right way, they can't fuck with you because, and I guarantee you it's gonna stop. But they're so used to us, like the way I reacted, that's what they used to. The angry black woman, snapping, going off ghetto. In the workplace, you gotta handle it differently. You gotta handle it the way they would handle it. How they be, oh, I just feel so attacked. Oh, I feel this. Do that too. Then they gonna stop fucking with you. Don't ever let nobody fuck with your money. And that's what I used to do. Don't ever let nobody mess with your money. I'm telling y'all from experience, no matter, like they like to poke, 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 and you just quiet, you go in, you do your job, you sit there and take it, but then when you explode, now you the bad person, now you're in the wrong, so from day one, if you feel some type of way, people saying racial stuff, or they being shady, or you feel like they just picking with you, just you, because you a new nurse, you a baby nurse, you, you're kind of green still, report them. And if your charge nurse don't do nothing, and if your manager don't do nothing, go to HR. Because we gotta stop playing with them. Like, they already be feeling like we're not supposed to be there, period. But report them. And that's it. If you ever have mean coworkers, in my case, mean nurses, I learned that you should never talk to HR because when I did that, I got in trouble. So here's what happened. When I used to work in the ICU, my coworker was the worst person I've ever met in my entire life. She would bully me every single day, but the worst part about it was she would make these weird racist remarks like she would only call me Jackie Chan, and I still cringe when I think about it. And finally, at that point, I was like, Alex, you're gonna put your big boy pants on and you're gonna do something about this. And this was my first big adult job, so I thought, I was doing the right thing of going to HR, you know? They're there to support you, they're on your side. And in reality, that isn't true. Because the next day after I reported it, I was at the nursing station, I was charting away, and then my nurse educator tapped me on the shoulder and said, Alex, let's go talk. And I was just like, um, can we talk right here? There's no one around. And then she grabbed me by the arm and then put me into the supply closet where she could yell at me without anybody hearing. And she claimed that I was rocking the boat. Because I reported a bully, I was rocking the boat and I was causing issues among the staff. And I was just like, what? And that's when I learned that every unit in a hospital has their own set culture. Like some units are really, really toxic, but some units are really wonderful and caring. And there's nothing you can do to change that. And honestly, the best way I dealt with mean coworkers was just quitting, honestly. Because someone like me isn't gonna change the culture of the unit. It's just not gonna change. So it's better off that I just get my experience and then I just go somewhere. I'm gonna let you know a few reasons why I quit my IR job. Number one, I had a horrible preceptor experience. You ever had a preceptor that you felt like just didn't wanna teach you? That was the situation I was in. Um, she was super annoyed with having me by her side. Um, and she would talk to me and say things like, um, why did you do this? Why don't you do this? Do this, do this. It was always her tone of voice. It was horrible. Um, so, you know, I took a lot of notes. I don't know this area. So I took a lot of notes in order for me to be confident on my own because, you know, in two more weeks, they were gonna put me out um, by myself. So she would say things like that. She would say things like, uh, it's been 30 days. Why don't you understand? Like we had a situation where a patient had to get from the stretcher back over to the bed. And it was four people helping her get the patient over to um, the actual bed. And she had just told me, hey, finish up on your charting. So I was finishing up on my charting. Uh, and like less than a minute later, she was like, why are you not getting up to help the patient get back to the bed? And I was like, well, you just told me to finish charting. Like she was like, no, you need to go over and help the patient get um, back over to the bed. You've been here 30 days. Why should I have to remind you why don't you get it like that is the way she was talking to me she literally said to me well um I was like well you no I said um if you wanted me to help with the patient all you had to do was just say that I would have gotten back up I thought you wanted me to do this I shouldn't have to it's been 30 days you should know Ugh. so um 
Come to find out, I had a 30 day evaluation where she told the manager what she thought about me. Literally unsatisfactory on everything. I only got um, a satisfactory on one thing and that was my attitude. So with a preceptor like that um, and my manager looking at me like I was incompetent uh, as well, um, there were no other black nurses in the unit. Um, for me, it was just not a good fit as far as um, the way she made me feel. Um, and also the other thing was their on-call um, schedule. It was like every other weekend and they're saying to one, two, three in the morning for patients. And so it's just not the life I want for myself right now. So my manager gave me this horrible review on a Friday. I went in on my off day that Monday uh, and gave her my immediate resignation. Like if you're gonna look at me like I'm an incompetent nurse, like um, I'm basically stupid. Um, I, I don't, I don't wanna be a part of a unit like that. If you're ever a part of a unit that makes you feel this way, you don't have to stay. Um, they have a way of making you feel bad because they're so short staffed. Well, I can see why. Um, so going on in the future, find something that's a better fit for you. Don't stay somewhere you're not appreciated or treated badly. Bullying in the nursing field. I don't know if it was just me, but when I was in nursing school, I always thought that doctors were gonna be the mean ones. No, it's nurses. I don't know why, but nurses are notorious for eating their young. And not all nurses were mean girls, but a lot of mean girls became nurses and Karens too. There's a very good chance that while you are in nursing school and clinicals that you will be paired with a nurse who is less than welcoming. Like I've literally seen nurses purposely try to lose and hide from their students. Now I don't know if it's because they think they're better than you or if they just think they're superior, they know more, or if they just forgot where they came from, but it's gonna happen. You're gonna meet some bully nurses. And my best advice for you as a nursing student, if you do get paired with one of these nurses, is to remember that your education and your learning of skills is far more important than if that nurse likes you or not. Ideally, talk to your clinical instructor, see if you can get paired with another nurse because there's plenty of them that love students and love to teach. But if you can't, if you can't and that nurse is not willing to teach you, be their shadow. Be the most annoying thing ever. You will still learn by just watching. Don't let them bully you, don't let them intimidate you, and trust me, they're gonna try. Chances are, wherever your clinical is, is not where you're gonna be working. And if it is, and you are with a bully nurse, don't work there. Or at least try to get on a different unit. Nurse bullies are huge red flags, first of all. If there are nurse bullies on the unit, it speaks volumes about the unit and their culture, so steer clear. If all else fails and you can't avoid them, what you're gonna wanna do is take two stethoscopes and you're gonna tie them together like nunchucks. Oh, hey y'all, let me tell you why working in healthcare is a complete fucking joke, okay? So today, one of the higher ups comes to me and she's like, hey, so your cardigan, you can't wear that anymore. Um, Somebody actually reported you for being unprofessional. And you know, I'm not gonna lie, when you first started wearing the cardigan, it was cute, but now it just looks ratty. And I just looked at her. First of all, it was very rude, number one, and very demeaning. Second of all, I was having a horrible day. So many things were going on and you're worried about a cardigan? A cardigan, literally a cardigan that I don't even wear during patient care. And the crazy thing about it is like, let's worry about how I haven't taken a break or how I haven't had a lunch and it's 4 p.m. Like, let's worry about the things that matter. And honestly, I just feel like when you work in healthcare, you can't be too bubbly. You can't be like a bright spirit because it's like they always have to find a way to knock you down. When I tell you I'm so bubbly on the unit, I literally, all the patients love me. Like, I've never had a complaint. And it's like you're worried about a freaking cardigan. It honestly, I almost cried because the day I was having, like, that was literally the straw that broke the camel's back. And it's just so disheartening, you know, especially like when you're working so hard at your job. And it's like they try to nitpick on the smallest freaking things. Like, girl, girl. And then for me to wear something ratty, for you to say it looks ratty, that was the adjective that you had to come up with about a fucking outfit that I had on. Ratty? Girl. And what's crazy is I wouldn't even have to wear the cardigan if they weren't being so petty and put a lockbox on the thermostat so we couldn't adjust the temperature in the nursing station. Like, it's always something like, why are y'all worried about that? Honestly, this doesn't have anything to do with patient safety, patient satisfaction, nothing. A fucking cardigan. And that just really was disheartening today. And I'm just over healthcare. These new nurses really be pissing me off. Like, I don't know what they expect, like, nursing was supposed to be. Like, everybody's supposed to be walking around in these cute fucking joggers with their scrub tops tucked in and their Stanley Cubs and their fucking bog bags. 
and it was gonna be all fucking flowers, peaches, and cream. I literally just had a nurse tell me to my face that she didn't become a nurse to do aid work. What the fuck is aid work? We all supposed to be here taking care of these patients. But you think because you got some extra letters behind your name, you're not supposed to wipe nobody's ass? Like some of these people's coming into nursing for all the wrong fucking reasons. Wanna come to work like it's a fucking fashion show, portraying it like it's something that it's not. We all work together, nurses, aides, whatever the hell you are, we all work together as a team to make sure these people get the care that they need. But, but to say that you didn't become a nurse to do aid work like is beneath you is just another reason why I'm already starting to get burnt out in this profession because Future nurses, please make sure that you want to come into this profession for all the right reasons. Because you actually care and want to, you know, take care of people. Not for solely a paycheck or the cute aesthetic that comes with being a nurse. I mean, shit, look at me right now. I look rough as fuck. I'm on my fourth 12. But please come in and do it for all the right reasons. Because we, we need people that want to do it for all the right reasons. Can we just normalize that you don't have to be friends with your coworkers? Controversial thought, I know. I'll be friendly with you. I'll be cordial with you. I will help you in any way that you need. But I don't have to be your friend. I don't have to accept your Facebook request. I don't have to accept your Instagram request. I don't have to have you look at my TikTok. For the sole fact that I don't think there's any need for you to see anything I'm doing outside of work. Like I've said in my previous TikToks, I've been a nurse for almost six years. It's taken me six years to fully understand this thought and also to set those boundaries with my coworkers. And don't get me wrong, it could be very, very awkward. There are those coworkers that are gonna keep sending you the Facebook, sending you the Instagram requests, whatever. I've had a coworker blatantly come up to me and ask me why I've removed them off of Facebook, Instagram, and continuously try to re-request me as if I'm gonna change my mind. I'm not. When I say this, that doesn't give people the excuse to go ahead and be rude, disrespectful, whatever to their coworkers. When I'm working with you, I'll be helping you. I will be respectful. I'll share a laugh with you, sure. But at the end of those 12 hours, I'm going home. I'm not texting you. I'm not thinking about you. I'm not hanging out with you. This is solely professional. I very much have the mentality that when I go to work, I'm going to work for myself and for my patients. I'm going in, punching in, giving the best I can, and then I'm going home. I don't go to work with the intent of making friends. Absolutely, I have made some of the best friends that I've ever had at work. Those people I will, you know, hang out outside of work, text, share a laugh with, but that type of relationship doesn't need to be with all my coworkers. I don't need to feel subjected to the fact that, oh, because we work with each other, I have to accept their friendship on Facebook or something. I don't have to, nor do I want to. There are those people that you work with. I know I have definitely experienced it, especially since I've opened up this TikTok account. There are people that blatantly just want to follow me on here, Instagram or wherever, who follow me view my content, make fun of it, or try to use it at my job to say, oh, she's unprofessional. Look what she's doing outside of work. What I do outside of work has nothing to do with how I am inside of work. That's why I don't want you viewing me outside of work since you want to be so judgmental. There's no need for you to see pictures of me, of my boyfriend, of my family, of any of that. There's no reason for you to have access to that. Like I said, this could be very, very awkward at times, especially if you have those coworkers that are for some reason so persistent. And I'm gonna give you the most simple response that you can give to them. All you have to say is, I don't feel as though this relationship has to leave the walls of our job. That's it. If they say is, you know, I don't feel like this relationship needs to leave this setting. They continue to like try to push at you. That's all you have to keep saying is, I understand, but I just don't feel like this relationship needs to exit outside of our workplace. I don't feel like this relationship we have needs to go beyond a professional point. Plus it's just like the more that they try to push you and the more they ask and the more worked up they get about it, the more that they're validating your point. Like I especially don't need to be friends with you. Keep talking, you're just validating my thought, Mary. But especially to my baby nurses because I'm very protective of my baby nurses. I'm very protective of my PCTs, my new hires that 
I say take this advice and run with it, especially in this work culture lately in healthcare. People like to go ahead and find any reason to hate the baby nurse, hate the new hire, hate the PCT, whatever. It'll make things 10 times easier on you. You don't have to stress about, okay, to post this because Susie Lou who is gonna see it and you know, will say something at work. If they're not friends with you on social media in the first place, there's nothing for them to look at. There's Maturing in nursing is realizing that one day you, your managers or your coworkers or whoever Ever can cuss each other out, go back and forth, go head to head, toe to toe, all motherfucking day long. The next day, next week, you come back into work, it's a clean slate, nothing ever happened. Because at the lo as long as nothing affects the patient, everybody gonna still have a job. Crazy. Nursing is so fucking toxic. It's sickening. Nursing school don't prepare you for that. But yeah, anyways, all I said that to say is new grads, don't let nobody disrespect you. Stand 10 toes behind you and how you feel. And don't let these old heads play with you because they will if you let them. Something I genuinely do not understand is how the laziest, worst, like bully people in the workplace always seem to get moved up the fastest. The kind people, the nice people, the yes people, people that would in leadership treat people like human beings, they don't like to move those people up. And I know this because the minute that I got into a management role and tried to give people mental health days and create the schedules that they wanted and just be cognizant of people having lives, um, they corporate hated it. I don't understand why these people get moved up and continue to get moved up. And I don't understand why companies never hold these people accountable for the terrible things they say and do. Okay, I'm not coming for this person, but I want to explain something. Yes, healthcare has some asshole personalities in it. But anywhere that adults work, will have asshole personalities. My mom worked at a bank and I remember she used to tell me all the time about these two women that were so hateful to her when she worked there. Like they bullied her at a bank. Okay, if it's happening in the hospital, it's happening everywhere. It's like, I don't give a fuck, exploit me bitch. And I've already been exploited all day, all day. For nothing. He knows, he made everything. Listen, it started off fine. It started out, friend. I am done. I quit. I quit. I quit. Lisa comes and she goes, hey, there's eight tables waiting. And I go, I go, what the fuck? I turn around. Now there's eight tables sitting. And I'm like, I already had 11, by the way, in case you wanted to know. In case you wanted to know. I literally grabbed the owner. I said, come here. I said, hey, go fucking sit down right there and don't move. Don't touch anything else. Next thing I know, five more tables are sitting down and I can't take it. I literally can't take it. I literally go up to you and I say, I don't fucking care that you're here. You're gonna give me five minutes whether you like it or not. Thank you. This one table gets up, comes to the kitchen. I've been waiting on my food for over an hour. Grab him, walk into the computer. Do you see how this is? 29 minutes. Sit down and go shut the fuck up. Get out of my face. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. Take it, but not for me. Not for me. <laughs> Having a nervous breakdown. <laughs> to everyone. Everyone has got it. Some people left me $3. Some people liked it and left me 30 I don't know how today went. I am never coming back here. I'm I'm standing on business, bitch. I'm done. I've been pissed since Friday. Somebody lied on me at my job, and instead of my job asking me was it true or false, they just assumed and went with the other person's side. So once I clarified and showed them that I was not the liar in the situation, an apology was not made. So being that the apology was not made, I told them I will no longer be taking supervisor calls, I will no longer be taking extra cases, and I will no longer be doing overtime. Y'all gotta find somebody else to do it, baby. It's 7.37, I'm quitting my job in 20 minutes, yup. And Monday, my coworker left at eight o'clock and did not tell me and left me in here to close this entire motherfucking bar by myself. So guess what I'm doing? The same thing. So as soon as eight o'clock hit, I'm out the door and I'm gonna put my badge on a desk with a, a note. Matter of fact, let me write the note right now. Two, twenty-one, twenty-four. 21, 24. Today is my last day. Okay, Scott, you're today.
period. It's 7.56. The manager's in the office with the door closed, so I can't go put my stuff in there. And now, it is goodbye, au revoir, to PHP. This place can kiss my motherfucking ass. Absolutely. I know I ain't the only one that feels like co-workers make or break the workplace. Cause you already know how it be. When you got that cool bunch, everything be real chill. You got clowning ass Calvin that keep everybody laughing. You got smooth ass Sam that's always getting at all the females. And y'all be in there just big chilling. However... When you got them co-workers like snitching ass Sally, that shit just get on your motherfucking nerves and irritate your soul. She do the little slick shit like when somebody asks, hey, where's Queen? Mm, I don't know, but she took her lunch about an hour and 10 minutes ago. Bitch, mind your motherfucking business. It ain't coming out of your motherfucking check. Don't monitor my motherfucking minutes. Or how about nosy ass Nancy who always want to question what the fuck you got going on? Bitch, can you get the fuck back to your cubicle and worry about your motherfucking job duty? Stop worrying about mine. Then you got Bad Breath Bob who always want to have his motherfucking ass in your face. God damn, I know you smell your breath. Please give me five feet, sir. And I'm so tired of complaining ass Candace. You complain all day long. I be wanting to tell her like, take that shit to HR because don't nobody want to hear that shit. And lazy ass Lisa, I'ma just tell you what everybody been wanting to tell you. Do your fucking work or find another job cause the rest of us is tired of watching you just sit on your motherfucking ass while we bust ours. And how about messy ass Mary? She be the first one ready to chit chat when somebody get called into the boss's office. You see, yes bitch, I seen it. I got eyes, thank you. Go back to your seat. Then we be having to deal with know-it-all Natalie for eight motherfucking hours who just somehow seems to think that she's your motherfucking manager. Bitch, you are my co-worker, not my motherfucking superior, okay? Oh, but let me just say I love Mama Maria. She don't never tell on you. You can sneak by her and tell me, hey, tell me when the boss coming. You done went to sneak outside and go have a smoke break for 30 minutes. She go, no say, no say. Yeah, I love you too, Maria. Stop trying to dangle termination over my head. I don't give a fuck. Raising your voice and snapping that grown ass man in the meeting. Talk about some, oh, I know everybody need their job. Bitch, you don't know what the fuck I need. And then my coworker gonna tell me, oh, be careful, that's the big boys. Bitch, I don't give a fuck, he corporate. Corporate better watch their motherfucking tone. These ain't no life changing ass wages. They only paying two more, two, two more dollars than across the street. I feel like every job got that one co-worker who is rude and nasty for absolutely no reason and think you're not going to do nothing about it or say nothing back. I'm the type of person that do my work and go home. So why you want to mess with me? Too often and too frequent do co-workers that see the people that are nice, that are respectful to others, they feel like they can speak to them any kind of way or be rude because they feel like the person is just going to take it because they're the nice co-worker. Whole time they don't know I am the nice co-worker till you try me till you try me till you try me I don't never disrespect nobody I'm very professional like I said I come in do the work and go home so please tell me why you want a problem with me why you want a problem with me I don't know who you was working with before me but I'm not no punk you're not finna talk to me like you stupid and think I'm finna just be like, no. How you treat me is exactly how I'm finna treat you. The energy you give me is the exact energy I'ma give you. I am the nice coworker till you do something crazy to me. I think we've been very clear that management and AFSA has been engaging in blatant intimidation and retaliation tactics against Amazon workers. And to be very clear, we're not going anywhere because your threats are just like your promises, empty and without backing. This company promises its workers diversity and inclusion and has the black employee network posted on every single wall, but does not provide translation for Hispanic and African immigrants. This company promises a safe workplace, but whenever queer and LGBT people here are discriminated against, mispronounced, or dead named, Glamazon does nothing. This company promises fair pay and fair hours, but you flex us without care for our time and without extra pay. As corporate profits rise, our pay stays the same. 
So no, we are not intimidated by your tactics. We're not going anywhere and we're not scared because our strength comes from our unity. That's right. Because we work together for the betterment of our coworkers. And unlike management, we're willing to put in the time and the energy to make sure that we get the pay and the benefits that we deserve. We know that we are in the right because you have to lie. No longer with so check, I got fired. That was hell. Y'all lame as fuck. I just wanna let y'all know that. You asked me an opinion. I gave you my opinion. You ain't like it. <laughs> Men bump heads every day, but you a warehouse person, so you wouldn't understand that. I don't care if you fire me. You can't threaten me. I hope you didn't think that did me anything. I don't give a fuck about getting fired. Okay, I got another job finna go start right now. Ben was gonna leave this puss ass company anyway, so it don't really matter. And my brother finna take me home. So let's have a celebrate. Yeah. I'm out this month. Let go, y'all. We done for. Puss ass niggas. Hey, take me home. They fired me, son. And I pop my little loat, you know, celebrate. Uh, I'm gonna uh, fuck with you, though, my uh, home, boy. I'm gonna fuck with you. I'm gonna fuck with y'all, boy. Dirty Water Production finna be too lit. We got another job starting soon. It don't matter. I should bat the fuck out of everybody, but they gonna put the people on me. Puss that. <laughs> Janitor and a warehouse work. How the fuck that work? Fuck Chad Web Supply. <laughs> hey, I'm going home. My brother finna take me home. So, what y'all gonna do by my 20 hours of PTO? Y'all keeping that? Or you gonna put it on I my check? I don't make that decision. Dude. Yeah, all right, Dallas. And I promise you, today gonna be my last motherfucking day on Amazon. How the fuck I wait two hours this morning to get some motherfucking gas just to wait for y'all to tell me to spend my motherfucking money so y'all can reimburse me. Bitch, I'm broke. Bitch, I'm eating chips and water today for lunch. I don't even got lunch money. What makes you think I got $55 for some gas? And bitch, I'm already not in the mood. I'm on my second day of my period, bitch. I should have called off like my mama told me to. Then get to the first fucking stop two hours fucking later just to find out the fucking sliding door don't fucking work. Now a bitch got a rider with the fucking doors wide open watching my fucking bag making sure nobody trying to jump up in on me while I'm driving on the road with the door open and shit. I don't get paid enough for this shit. I have to go to Popeyes, Wendy's, Dee Dee's, fucking, fucking McDonald's and some shit for $20 an hour. We making the same type of pay, motherfucker. And they got AC all day. Y'all got a bitch in AC on in the front, bitch getting in the van, bitch sweating like a motherfucker, neck hot, everything hot. Bitch, I'm not in the mood already, okay? Hold on, I just got off work. I just got, I don't damn well you just asked me to do something. I just got off work. 10, 30 hour shifts. I just got off work. I just worked 300 hours in three weeks. What the hell is you talking about? I just got a wait and ask me. Hey, y'all, I'm at Amazon right now. I fell through this grate with this broke foot and this grate. And they would not allow me to have an incident report written down. This is the safety officer right here. He just told me he cannot have the incident written down. I want you to see this. This is solid metal. I ended up falling through this. And they said they cannot. This is Amazon. MGE8. I have a broken foot that I broke up here at Amazon. They just said they will not let me have the incident report written down. I can't write down anything. It's, it doesn't exist. At about 8 50 in the morning, I end up crashing into. You're gonna have to remove me. You're gonna have to remove me. You gotta remove me, bro. Because, what you mean? I got my foot broke at this job. I went through here. I got folded up like a burrito in this thing this morning. That shit ain't fucking funny. Why are you, why are you, you don't have to look. Yes, I do. Because they won't let me document that I even got flipped over. He told me I can't do it. He said they cannot document what happened this morning. I got, I just left the hospital for five and a half hours. Oh God, I am shaking. No, you do not. Call the police. I'm not gonna go nowhere till I write that document up. I'm not going nowhere. Call 12. I want y'all to look at this. Call 12 right now. Call the police. Please. On a broke foot nigga who, who just failed. Call the police.
all right guys so i work at amazon right and one thing i'll tell you all about amazon is it's just like high school everybody is fucking stupid everybody is petty as fuck everybody fucking everybody everybody got drama and don't get me started on the night shift but it's it's honestly a fucking mess i come in here straight face i barely speak to anybody other than people that i actually know and i get the fuck out because one thing about it they started a rumor about me before on my other shift that i was no actually this shift and i didn't start this shift not too long before that there was some bitches fighting in the parking lot somebody come up to me talking about that was you and your people fighting in the parking lot bitch does it look like i will be at work the next day if i'm fighting in the parking lot trying to stab bitches no i don't even fuck with y'all i don't even know y'all and y'all don't even know my name and y'all already making up room it has now been three months probably exactly 91 days since i made my tiktoks talking about my experience working at ebbin new york and ebbin new york has actually decided to respond by suing me i was served papers yesterday guys so they're counter suing me because I'm suing them. That should tell you everything you need to know. We're not even gonna get into this, but we're gonna get into what they said on Instagram. They made a whole post, I guess on Instagram, TikTok, everything. And I'm just gonna upload it up here so y'all can read it. My thing is you guys took three long months to respond no apology you guys are basically saying that i'm lying about my experience what makes you think i will make a four-part tiktok story with no evidence with what i'm saying did you guys even think about the fact that as soon as i made my tiktok stories so many people were backing me up and so many people that i've never even met had the same type of stories dealing with you guys and it's the simple fact that you guys are saying my underperformance. Is that the reason why I was mistreated and disrespected the entire time I worked there? Please let me know. If I was underperforming, why do I have so many screenshots of all the things that I've done for you guys? And it's viral. Why? And then you guys are saying 50% black on your team now. Our executive team is 50% black, demonstrating our strides towards equity, inclusion, and belonging. Did it take you three months to get the 50% black people? I just, I don't have any words. I mean, I have all the evidence in the world to back up everything that I was saying. There's so many other people that are speaking out against you guys and you're coming at me because all I did was state my experience. That's all. Here's one thing that I want you guys to do up in New York. Take a picture of your 50% black team, actually the whole team. Take a picture with your team. Make some videos. How about that? Just show everyone how your office looks. That's all you gotta do, right? I am truly disappointed in you guys, but honestly, I expected it. So I will see you guys in court. You wanna sweep or you want them up? No, I'm not doing anything. Okay, then you can go home too. No, cause you're not my boss. Oh, I'm not? No, you're not. Oh, okay, perfect. Tell the daddy, please. I will. Okay. I did it. Why? Because she's not. My boss's name is and above him is and that is who I work for. No, yeah, that's enough. Yes. Any issues you have, you can take it to and then you can relay it that way. It's going to be for long. I can show you.
No, I would prefer that you just get away from me. Oh, get away from me. Oh. Get away from me. Get away from me. And now she's just harassing me at this point. Like I told her. Yeah, you are. Get away from me. Just Yeah. I had to learn very early in my work life that you can never be friends with people you work with. So one day I was just going up to the front to get my returns because I'm a stalker and I was getting them in the middle of that. There was a new employee that I saw. She was some sort of five foot two, five foot light skin or whatever. And then she was a new employee. She only been there for like two days. And right off rip, I could tell that she's the type that just go ahead and make work friends because she was trying to talk to everybody, including me. And when she was talking to me, look, I'm a laid back dude. So I was like, yo, what's good? You know, how's your few days working here? And that right there, that's where I messed up. Right off ripping the conversation, she was a little giggly, but I didn't really see that much of a big deal of it. So I just went back to my department and started stalking. While my homeboy that I work with, he works at front end with her, came to me at lunch talking about some bro. I think that new girl likes you. I was like, nah, man, she don't even know me like that. And plus, I'm not trying to date nobody from work. Fast forward to like my last 15 minutes, I saw her again, but this time she started acting a little too friendly. I went in the break room and I saw her right there and she was like, come sit over here, come sit over here. So I sat across from her. We started chatting it up, blah, blah, blah. And then she had asked me, what time do you get off? I said, I get off at 1130 and I got stuff to do after I leave. Why? Why the hell she had said, meet me when you get off work? Then she gave me her Instagram and told me to text her when I'm finna get ready to leave. And bro, I'll tell you this right now. When it was time for me to go, I dipped. She got mad at me the next day, but I didn't care because bro, I just wanted to get my check. Okay, so work story time. So I come into work. I was supposed to come in at five, but the schedules got mixed up between me and another server. She thought she was supposed to come in at five and I was supposed to come in at two, but it was the other way around. So I came in at two. She's coming in at five. Anyway, I walk in with a pounding migraine, by the way, and the lights are flickering and shit. And I'm like, like, bro, my head hurts. What is going on? And um, they're like, oh, the power has been cutting in and out because the power lines are getting blown because of the wind and so as long as the computer's still running make sure you continue to take transactions i'm like okay i'll take i'll keep taking orders and so this lady comes in um i take her order i write it down she gives me her cash i go over to the computer to put it in there and the computer is down it literally cut off and i had no idea and so i was like i'm so sorry like i can't even complete your transaction right now like i don't know what else to do but i can't like there's no way i can get the money in the drawer like and i can't just like leave it sitting out like i can but i'm not supposed to do that you know what i mean like i could like but i'm not supposed to and so she was like i'm just really hungry like girl and she goes it's black history month you're so right ally here um i got you i'm literally gonna just hope i don't get in trouble for hiding this money under the counter until the computer turns back on and i'm gonna get you your sandwich okay reparations period the simple fact that i went into my job today and literally was dress coded i wasn't on the clock bitch the fuck y'all walmart got me so fucked up even on my days off about to list three tactics that jealous people use in the workplace number one ignoring you have a really bright light and you intimidate people. And you're highly mistaken if you think these people are gonna work on their own self-esteem. No, they're gonna try to break yours down. You can walk in a room and say good morning to everybody and they will ignore you. They will give you a stank face. You could be in a room trying to join in on a conversation and they will sit there and intentionally ignore you. They will walk in a room and speak to everybody but you. They're doing this because they wanna make you feel invisible. They wanna make you feel like you're not nobody. Don't fall for that. Number two, they will set you up for failure on purpose. There are people out here who will intentionally exclude information from you. They will train you and not teach you what you need to know. And then they will walk around acting like you're stupid and you're incompetent because you don't know what to do, but they never told you. This is so they can humiliate you so they can feel better than you. Number three, they will pick you apart and hold on to every flaw that you have and announce it to the world. When you show that you are not perfect, they just love it. Huh, see, she made a mistake. She doesn't know what she she's doing she's out there messing up oh ah, they just have to let everyone know now they might be able to fool everyone else into thinking that you're stupid but you're not baby your light follows you everywhere you go so you're gonna always run into at least one hater on the job so and these types of people run in packs together so they will team up on you doing all of these things to you at once making your life a living hell While you're going through this just know that it's not you it's them they need therapy they, they need healing um but they probably won't do that so i suggest that you just leave the environment that enables this type of behavior and go on about your business. How are you? Give me just a second. Well, seems like it's unplugged. So, attention, Target shoppers. 
Consider this my grande exit. You see, I've been brewing up something more than thankless lattes and overpriced sugar water. My grande, <laughs> my grande plan to escape this wretched heat dungeon of soulless fluorescent lights and infant crying ambiance. But before I go, let's talk about your piss for benefits policy. I mean, it's like ordering a large frappuccino with a double shot of disappointment. Sick time, vacation hours, ha! You'd be better off asking for unicorn tears. Well, how's this for a magical double shot? I quit. Moi, no bars.